Hi guys, my name is Katie or KB Does Art, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to model a piggy bank in Maya. So I actually have two references that I'm going to be using. I'm going to do like a front reference and a side reference, so we'll need to input both of those. Uh, so go ahead and open up Maya, and uh, I'm in perspective view right now, but I'm just going to click space, and I'm going to do the front facing mode, so click space again to get in there, and then I'll do view, image plane, import image and I'm just going to find my front facing reference. Okay, here he is. I'm just going to scale that up so you can click R and scale it and then click W and I'm going to move that onto the origin. Perfect. All right, next I'm going to input my um, side reference. So I'm just going to click space again, click space to go in the side and do the same thing, view image plane, import image, and then find your side reference. And then I'm gonna scale that up and move it to be somewhat centered. Uh, next, I'm just gonna look here and I want to move this guy so that the front aligns well with kind of like how far out I think kind of like the nose should go and things like that. And then I got the height pretty well for both of those, so that should be good. And the origin looks pretty good as well. Okay, so uh, I think what I'm gonna first do is for each of these images, I'm actually going to click uh, in the attribute editor. I wanna click looking through camera for both of these images, uh, just so I don't see them in my perspective view, um, but I can see it when I'm in, um, you know, whatever view I need to be in. So uh, I think first I'm just gonna start with the front view. So you can click in the front view um, and I'm gonna start all of this out with a cylinder. So this cylinder is facing the wrong way. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. You can do that either in the attribute editor or in the channel box, whichever way you feel more comfortable doing it. Um, next what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale this guy up to be the size that I need my piggy bank to be. So uh, maybe like about there is pretty good. Now we can go ahead and do the face first. Uh, that's basically going into face mode, selecting all of these faces, and then doing control E to extrude them. And I'm just going to turn the offset down. Let's go into wireframe mode. Uh, and then you can kind of see how we are going to be kind of shaping them to be about this size. So I'm just going to be scaling, moving um, maybe like about there. That looks good. And then uh, I'm going to go into perspective view so I can just see it like this. Uh, and then I'm going to extrude one more time, control E, and this time I'm going to push the thickness up. And we can eyeball this uh, or we can see it uh, in this image plane. Oh yeah, as you can see, my reference is a little off. Let's see. I'll just push my reference on up to be about like there. All right, so actually the, the length that I did was good. So you can just eyeball it to be about there. And then uh, really next what needs to happen is I'm going to be making uh, some multi cuts on uh, this and we're going to be scaling uh, some of these uh, kind of like edge loops that we're gonna be making. So first thing I want to do is hold control while I'm doing this and then I'm just going to left mouse click to make these uh, edge loops. And I'm just going to make them kind of like where there's big changes in depth. And then I'm going to go into my vertex mode and I'm going to be uh, basically selecting all of the vertices in an edge loop and then holding R and kind of just scaling them as needed. So obviously like this last edge loop definitely needs to come out further. I'm gonna hold control and scale up on this uh, kind of like uh, top uh, axes kind of go in horizontally. That basically means it'll scale on both of these axes so that we keep our object looking symmetrical. All right, so that looks pretty good like that. Um, 
for these guys, I actually think it might be easier to take this edge loop first, scale it down, and then attempt to get this edge loop in here and scale it down. There we go. And then you can see I did grab this little edge loop. So we can kind of select that in this view just by holding shift or tab and double clicking that ring. And then we can go ahead and hold control and scale up like that. Also, this is a little off. So I'm just going to move it just a tad, maybe like that. I'm going to add some more multi-cuts just where I kind of see fit. You can kind of do the same on your model uh, just to kind of make it, you know, fit however you need it to on yours. You can also select like some of the vertices and move them up like that. Um, kind of depends. I do think that I'm actually going to take these vertices and push them up because I don't actually want... Um, the legs to be part of the cylinder like same with the ears like we'll do all of that separately so kind of just do like the base shape and then we'll do the uh kind of like the actual pieces and chunks uh kind of separately all right so just adding in my last little edge loop to get things all sorted out um we can kind of see how he's looking. He's looking kind of round and fun. Uh, if you go into object mode and click R, you can see how it's rounding out. Now, as for those ears, I think what I'll probably end up doing is um, just grabbing some faces like this, and then I'll extrude and offset them in to be about the size that we need them to be. All right, so that should be about good. So I'm looking at the size of them. I'm gonna make them a little bit smaller. Then I'm just gonna take those faces on the inside. I'm gonna take these ears and extrude them. Then I will offset them in and up their thickness. I'm trying to get like a little more round feel to them. Uh, we can maybe do about there, and then I'm just going to click R and just scale them a little bit. And then if you're still not happy with that size, you can go through and select this uh, ring, and you can click R and kind of scale that and move that around. You can also move the individual faces if you want to get a little bit more kind of like specific on the shape. I'm going to make them lean forward a little bit, so you can do that as well. All right. So uh, as you guys, guys can guess, uh, it's kind of the same process for the feet. Uh, which should be like these four squares. You could do the outer squares too. Um, like if you wanted to do maybe like these two. Uh, but for that process, you're just going to extrude them and just up their thickness. They don't have to be perfect by any means, but something like that is pretty good. It's supposed to be kind of like fun and ceramic, so... All right, so as you can see, our shape is looking pretty good so far. Um, next, what I want to do is I want to take these faces and extrude them on the top. And then I want to offset them to be that little like slit that we're going to see um, for the money to go in for the piggy bank. Uh, actually, what I want to do uh, next, let's make the offset a little bit bigger and then offset it one more time and make that offset a little bit smaller, maybe like that. Uh, and then you can delete those edges, so you're left with something like this. Uh, or delete those faces, so you're left with something like that. 
And then you can kind of scale that edge to be whatever size kind of coin you want. Uh, but as an object, I want to take the whole object and extrude it. And then I'm going to push the thickness in probably about that much, does not need to be a lot. And then as you can see, our mesh is black right now, which means our mesh is reversed. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just want to do, um, we'll do mesh display reverse. So now it's like this. Next, since I want this kind of more in the center, I'm gonna take these faces like this and I'm just gonna push it. Uh, you can take those inside faces as well. Just kind of push it over a little bit to that center. Um, that should be good. We can also take these faces, kind of push them over as well. So um, that should be uh, pretty good. All right, it's also looking a little tilted, so I'm just gonna even it out a little bit. Okay, that should be fine. All right, so the last thing I guess would be the tail, which I think the tail is just like a little tiny section kind of like protruding off. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take, um, maybe we'll take these two faces or maybe just this face can kind of be up to you. I think I'll do two. I'm going to extrude that and then uh, I'm just going to extrude it one more time and uh, make sure you keep that on. Uh, and then actually I think what I'm going to do is just push the thickness up and then we can kind of use this to make a sort of curve for ourselves. So I'm going to make a multi-cut here, and then you can use this edge loop and use that as the beginning of that tilt, like that. And then um, we can move these faces. You can add another multi-cut. All depends on how like twisted you want this to become, but... This is just like me kind of twisting it, forming it. I think I made it kind of long, but I, I mean, I guess that's fine. Oh yeah, I definitely made it too long. So if you make it too long, you can just kind of take these vertices. You can take this row as well. And I'm just gonna literally scale it down and push it in. All right, there we go. That looks better. All right, the last little part that I want to uh, do with you guys is just make like a quick little face um, and put these little indents in the nose. Um, so I think first what I'll just do is uh, grab, I guess we can do this with a just like a little sphere. Just grab a sphere, scale it on down, and I'm just going to kind of like place him and then duplicate him, control D, and just move it on over to go in the eyes. Then you'll have to take both those spheres and move them so they actually clip onto your mesh like that. And then the same process really goes for those nostrils. You can use the um, circle like that and push them like this into the mesh. Now, this is going to be kind of up to you guys on how you want to do this. If you just want to have little dots for the nose, you can do that. If you want to have like little indents for the nose, uh, we're going to have to smooth out this object, which would be mesh smooth. I would give it like two dimensions, probably like that, if you don't uh, mind having like a high poly model. And then what you can do is you can uh, select the object, select one of those spheres, and you're going to do mesh booleans difference. And it'll cut out like a little section uh, where those circles used to be. So like that. That's kind of like a quick little uh, 
hack on how to get like portions out a side of your drawings. But it does require you to smooth your object beforehand because if you don't, it might look a little wonky. All right, um, as for the smile, I honestly don't even know if I'm gonna include a smile. I kind of like mine without it. But if you would like to, you can do that using um, maybe like a torus um, or an elongated cylinder. So that's a couple different ways that you can do that. All right, so that's uh, a basic uh, piggy bank. You can also add some details in the ears. Um, you can select maybe like this portion of the inner ear, and then we can uh, control, uh, I mean hold tab and select the other side like this. Okay, make sure they're even. And then you can do control E to extrude that. And uh, then you can push the thickness uh, just ever so slightly in. Don't do that much. I'm doing like super small. Maybe like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, all works well. Then you can kind of get that cute little detail. All right, so that is about it for kind of just like a quick and easy um, piggy bank. I'm just going to throw some easy material onto these guys, which you can do with AI standard surface. You can make those guys black, and then you can make this pink. Um, for the piggy bank, I'm going to grab a plane and give that the checker texture, which is AI standard surface, grab this little color checkered, and then we can go to Arnold, get a sky dome light and let's save this. So nothing bad happens. And then you can do Arnold render. And we'll kind of see how the piggy bank is turning out. All right, I definitely picked too vibrant of a pink. So I am going to, uh, you can go ahead and delete your history at this point. And I'm going to make this guy just like a gentler pink. All right, this is looking so cute. I don't know how to, what angle I should best show this to you, <laughs> to you in. He is perfect. All right, maybe like that. All right, there we go. So you've got kind of a quick and easy piggy bank, not the most perfect model, but if you just need an easy piggy bank, this will do. So I hope you guys fun. I'm really excited to see what you guys um, kind of come up with. And if you have any issues or anything, please let me know. I would love to help you guys out. Um, but yeah, you guys can check out my newsletter. I usually send out one every month just saying what's coming up. And um, I also have a virtual tip jar if you feel inclined to do that. But yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.